All right, so for logarithmic equations, what are they? Logarithmic equations are equations where the argument of the logarithmic function contains the variable that you are trying to solve for. So for some logarithmic equations, they might be written in this form, log base b of an expression. So m is representing an algebraic expression, and the logarithm is equal to c. You can solve logarithmic equations of this form by rewriting them into an equivalent equation in exponential form. So we talked about changing from logarithmic form to exponential form a couple videos ago. Using the definition of a logarithmic using the definition of a logarithm, we're going to solve logarithmic equations. So the first step, make sure that the expression is in this form where the logarithm base b of some expression is on one side of the equation and the other side is equal to a constant or a real number. Then we're going to use the definition, as stated before, to rewrite the equation into exponential form. So let's review how to rewrite this um, logarithmic equation into exponential form. You take the base, you rewrite it into the c power, and then this equals the argument. So these two expressions are equivalent. b to the c power equals m and log base b of m equals c. They say the exact same thing, one with logarithms and one with exponential form. Once you have the equation in exponential form, then you can solve for the variable. And then, one of the most important steps with logarithmic equations Notice that we did not check any of the equations when we solved exponential equations. The reason why is because exponential equations, the domain was all real numbers. For logarithmic functions, keep in mind that you need to find out what will make the argument only positive. So the solution set should only include values where m is greater than zero. So you have to check your answer with the original equation. So in other words, to avoid extraneous solutions, those are solutions that do not check with the original equation, you need to determine the domain of the argument for the logarithmic expression. So let's try this out on example three. Solve the following logarithmic equations, if necessary, around the three decimal places and check for extraneous solutions. So number one. Let's try log base 3 of x equals 4. Notice that this is a logarithmic equation because x is unknown and it's inside the logarithm. It's the argument. Convert to exponential form. So convert this logarithmic equation into an equivalent. exponential equation. Alright, so that means take log base 3 of x equals 4, rewrite to logarith from rewrite from logarithmic form to exponential form. So base 3 to the fourth power equals x. So 3 to the fourth power equals x. So notice that x is already isolated, so we don't have to solve for x now. And x is equal to 3 to the 4th, which is equal to 81. Check the answer. So this is the last step. Check the answer for extraneous solutions with the original equation. Let's try out another let's try out another problem.
let's try out another problem, number two. This time we're going to solve the equation log base 3 of x plus 25 equals 4. Takes 50 divide by 62, divide by 3 on both sides of the equation. So let's talk about other types of logarithmic equations. We just finished these types of equations. We rewrote the logarithmic equation in this form, log base b of m equals c, into an equivalent exponential form so that we could solve for the variable that was located in the argument. However, notice that these types of equations, you need to have a single logarithm and the coefficient needs to be one. So we needed a single logarithm, coefficient was one. So now imagine that you have logarithmic equations where there are several logarithms, two or more. You can use the properties of logarithms to condense them into a single logarithm before you start to solve the equation by converting from logarithmic form to an equivalent exponential form. So let's try example four. Solve the following logarithmic equation. If necessary, round to three decimal places and again, check for extraneous solutions. So let's solve the equation log base 2 of x subtract 3 plus log base 2 of x plus 3 and this is equal to 2. So to solve this logarithmic equation you have two logarithms on one side of the equation but the other side is a constant. So it's very similar to the forms that we were solving in the previous example, except we don't have one logarithm, we have two. So how can you can take these two logarithms and condense them to a single log if there's a plus between them? You have to use the product rule. So use the product rule for logarithms to condense to a single logarithm. So the left side of this equation becomes a single logarithm, base 2. It's important that they are both base 2 on the left side. It becomes base 2, and then what do you do with the arguments with the product rule? You multiply. So x minus 3 times x plus 3. That's the argument of the logarithm, and it equals 2. So we combine the two logarithms, condense them into a single log, but now we have to simplify the argument to find out what exactly is this argument with log base 2. It's x squared subtract 9 when you multiply this out. The middle terms, middle two terms will cancel out and this is equal to 2. So now we're back to the types of equations we we're solving in the previous example. Convert to an equivalent exponential form. So take base 2 to the second power and it equals the argument. So convert to an equivalent exponential form. That means we'll have 2 squared equals x squared subtract 9. This becomes a quadratic equation. x squared subtract 9 equals 4. So solve quadratic equations. This has a single x squared term, so we can use the square root property. Add nine to the other side of the equation to get 13. Now I'll use the square root property to take the square root on both sides to get x equals plus or minus square root of 13, which is approximately plus or minus 3.606 to three decimal places. So this means we have two solutions. 
x equals square root 13, x equals negative square root 13. But we haven't checked both answers with the original equation. So that's the last step. Check both solutions with the original equation. So we know we have to check our answers with logarithmic equations. Let's check x equals positive square root 13. So go back to the original equation. Log base 3 of x, that's square root 13, we believe it is. Subtract 3 plus log base 3 of square root 13 plus 3. Does this equal to 2? So one thing to check, the arguments must be positive for this particular x value. Square root 13 is about 3.606. So subtract 3, that become, that's still positive. Square root 13 plus 3, that's still positive. So if you check the answer, it will be fine because the arguments are both positive for the logarithms. However, let's check the other value, x equals negative 13 square root 13, go back to the original, log base 2 of square, negative square root 13, subtract 3, plus log base 2 of negative square root 13, subtract 3, does this equal to 2? This time, notice that the argument will be negative, both of them. Negative square root 13 is negative 3.606, Subtract 3, that's a negative argument. Same thing here. Negative square root 13, subtract 3, that's also negative. So, these logarithms are not real numbers. You cannot have two real numbers added together to give you 2, which is a real number. So, x equals negative square root 13 is not a solution. So, there's only one solution to this logarithmic equation and it's x equals square root 13, which is approximately 3.606. So just because the answer is positive does not mean it will automatically be a solution. You have to make sure you check every solution that you come up with with the original equation. Okay, so let's solve one more type of logarithmic equations in this section. You may have more than one logarithmic expression with the same base, but they're on opposite sides of the equation, and there is no constant term. So these are different than the equation that we've solved in example four. We are going to use the one-to-one -one nature or property for logarithmic functions to solve equations that have more than one logarithm, but they're on opposite sides of the equation. So, step one. Express the equation in the form log base b of m equals log base b of n. Notice that the bases of the logarithms are equal. They're the same, base b, base b, and the logarithms are equal to each other. There is no constant term in the equation. It's just logarithm equals logarithm. Notice that this form involves a single logarithm with a coefficient of 1 on each side of the equation. That's important. Now, use the one-to-one -one property to rewrite the equation without logarithms. Now, here's how the one-to-one -one property works. If you have log base b of m equals log base b of n, and these are equal to one another, then the arguments must be equal to each other. So, m equals n. Once you have the logarithms removed from the equation, then solve for the variable. And then again, because you start off with a logarithmic equation, you must check your solutions with the original equation. So in this case, you only include solutions where the values satisfy the argument for one logarithm must be positive, and the argument of the other logarithm must also be positive. So the last example, solve the following logarithmic equations 
If necessary, round to three decimal places and again check for extraneous solutions. Number one, log base three of 81 equals log base three of four X attract six. So notice that these are both logarithms equal to one another. There is no constant term and they're both base three. In this case, this means the logarithms are equal. with the same base. Then the arguments must be equal to each other. So this implies 81 equals 4x attract 6. So now notice that there are no logarithms in the equation. We can solve for x. Add 6 to both sides of the equation. 4x equals 87. Divide both sides by 4. And so x equals 87 divided by 4, which is 21.75. But we're not finished. You need to check your answer. So check the answer with the original equation. So the original equation was log base 3 of 81 equals log base 3 of 4x attract 6 and we are checking um, x equals 87 divided by 4 for x. So replace the x with log, um, 87 divided by 4. Log base 3, 4 times 87 divided by 4 then subtract 6. Are these two logarithms equal? One side of the logarithm is argument 81. The other side of the equation has log base 3, 4 divided by 4, cancel each other out, 87 subtract 6, and that is 81 inside the argument. So it's fine. So the original equation has a solution of x equals 87 fourths, or 21.75. Okay, one more problem. Number two, log base two of two x attract three equals log base two, negative four x plus six. So these types of equations are not difficult to solve. It's just you need to check your answer. And we're gonna see that with this example. Notice that the logarithms have the same base and they're equal to each other. That means the arguments must be equal to one another. So this implies that 2x attract 3 equals negative 4x plus 6. So this becomes a linear equation. We can isolate the x by moving all the terms with the variable to the same side. So add 4x to make it 6x. Add 3 to get um, 9. So this implies that x is equal to 9 6, which reduces or simplifies to 3 halves. And if you change it to a decimal, 1.5. Okay, so we're not finished. Check the answer in the original equation. So we're going to check that x equals 3 halves. We'll check with the original equation log base 2 of 2 times 3 halves, subtract 3, does this equal to log base 2 of negative 4 times x, 3 halves, plus 6. The left side of this expression is log base 2 of 2's will cancel out, and you get 3 minus 3, that's 0, and does this equal the right side, 
log base 2. 4 goes on the 2 2 times. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 6. That's 0. So you get the same expression on the left side as the right side. So are they equal? Does the original answer check? No, because this and this expression are not real numbers. So if they don't even exist, how can they equal to each other? So if these are not real numbers, that means x equals 3 halves is not the solution. This is called an extraneous solution. So this equation has no solution. That's why you must check your answers with logarithmic equations. Sometimes when you substitute in the value of x that you believe is the solution, gives you a logarithm of 0 or a negative number. And of course, those are not real numbers. So they cannot equal other real numbers. So this finishes up our discussion on logarithmic equations. If you have any questions on the two different types of logarithmic equations, please let me know where you have a logarithm that equals a real number, and then where you have logarithm equals a logarithm with the same base. The important thing is that you check your answers with logarithmic equations. And I'll see you at the next video when we solve exponential growth and exponential decay problems using logarithms.